Hey drummers, it's Rob Lickin here from drumstheword.com. Welcome to this free full video song lesson where today I want to show you how to play the song Hanging on the Telephone by Blondie, drummed of course by the legendary Clem Burke. And I've got all, all the bars, the, the entire um, full song PDF drum chart you can download for free from my website. You'll find a link beneath this video. So I have these two pages printed out in front of you as we go through this together. It's gonna to make things obviously a lot easier for you to understand. And if you've got any of your own song suggestions, then please go over to my Facebook page. I'm sort of doing a, a, some free lessons leading up towards Christmas uh, and there's still time to get your song suggestions in. You'll find the post pinned to the top of the page. Uh, and then also a few, few posts down, you'll find a Christmas post as well. I'm asking for Christmas songs. I've got one coming up on Friday. I'm pretty sure that I'll be doing it then. Um, so if you've got your own talk sessions, then please go over there to do so. Or just type them in the comments below, you never know. I read all the comments. So what we've got is the intro and we've got that little sort of telephone thing. And then Clem comes in with uh, this drum fill on the floor tom and snare drum. One and two and three and four and simple as that. The thing with this song, which makes it intermediate advanced level, is the tempo. It's a fast song, surprisingly fast. You listen to the song, you think it's not that fast, but then you try and play the eighth notes all the way through and the ride cymbal. You have to be properly warmed up for this. One and two and three and four and. Then we go into our first um, beat, which is on the closed hi-hat. And basically for the entire song, pretty much, Clem is just playing snare drum on two and four, and then filling in all the gaps with the bass drum. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two. That's the tempo. So if you find this too hard to play all those bass drum notes, you could just play. Well, I'm just playing one and two and three and four. So you haven't got three bass drums in a row each time, you just got two. If that helps you to get through the song, have a go at playing it, then you could play that all the way through. Don't worry too much about it, but this is what Clem's doing. So we come in with this tempo, with this intro. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Up to speed. And four and one and two and three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And like all these songs, when you've got a crash cymbal, and you've got fast right hand eighth notes or whatever they happen to be. Don't feel the need to rush back to the hi-hat to play the and of one. I did there, what I did there was one and two and. So I missed out the hi-hat on the and of beat one. If you wanted to come back in time, fine, but you don't have to. The crash symbol's was ringing out and filling in that gap. So we go on to the second line of verse one and we just got four more bars of that, that fast drum beat. And then at the end of that line, we get a very subtle little opening hi-hat on beat four. One and two and three and four. So the hi-hat's open on beat four, four and, bass drum it's on the and of four, four and, giving our right hand time to come to a crash cymbal, four and one, where the hi-hat's then gonna close as we go into chorus one. Chorus one is the same as our verse, we're just on the ride cymbal. Actually, um, what, what Clem's doing is he's, he's not really washing the, the ride cymbal, he's playing it more with, with the beat of the stick. Not doing this. Very, very sort of precise um, uh, ping on the ride cymbal. We're getting there. We're not getting a heavy wash. We get that later at the end of the uh, end of the song when you move to the crash cymbal. So we get four bars of that that fast on the ride cymbal. Second line, same again. And then our next drum fill is at the end of the chorus one on the second line. He plays one and two and three. And then I don't hear a ride cymbal, I just hear the snare drum and bass drum being played on the and of three. One and two and three and. And if you wanted to play and instead, just basically continuing the ride cymbal to the and of three. One and two and three and. That's how I thought it would have been played, but if you listen carefully, it's one and two and three and. Bass drum and snare drum on the and of three, and then 40 and a. One and two and three, and 40 and a, one and two and. We'll back to the verse two when we get to the closed hi hats. One and two and three, one and two and three and four and a. One and two and three and four and a, one and two and three and four. So the last two bars, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and a, one and two and three. And again, I'm not rushing back to the hi hats on the and of beat one when I move to verse two. So now let me play it up to speed for you without the microphone so you can hear just the drums. I'll play verse one and chorus one. Here we go.
So on to verse two, and I don't think I mentioned it for the intro, but we do get uh, an interesting number of bars for some of the sections. So verse two, you can see we're back to our fast hi-hat um, drum beat. Uh, four bars on the first line, but the second line is three bars long. So just be aware, it's slightly shorter than you think as we go before we go into bridge one. And at the end of verse two, the, the third bar of the second line, we get four eight um, uh, open hi-hat notes. They're kind of subtle on the recording, but I thought I'd include them. One and two and three and four and so it's kind of like a build up of open hi-hat leading into bridge one where again the hi-hat closes as we move to the ride cymbal. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and that kind of effect. Uh, it's not very obvious on the recording but if you want to sort of uh, replicate note for note then, then, then you can sort of do something subtle with the hi-hat there. Uh, it also makes sense. It's sort of like a drum fill. We get, we're building up the, the, um, the excitement with, with the open hi-hats. So then we go into bridge one. One, two, three, six bars long. It's the same drum beat all the way through. Cool little drum beats. We're playing a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and. It's a two and, it's the interesting bit there. And again, the bass drum is just filling in all the gaps. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and Again, if you wanted to make it simpler with the bass drum, you could play. Well, just playing one and two, three and four, one and two, three and four with the bass on one and and three and. So then six bars of that, that bridge drum beat, then we go into chorus two, and we start to get the, the choruses being broken up between the right cymbal and the crash cymbal. So the first two bars are just on the right cymbal. Then the next two bars are on the crash cymbal. Now I've written them as eighth notes. Now I'm not sure what Clem does, it's, it's hard to hear on the recording, it's hard to hear for any drummer playing crash cymbal eighth notes. They might be playing all the eighth notes. Or they might just be playing quarter notes. If you couldn't hear the rubber pad being struck there, then if I was, if you're just hearing the crash cymbal on its own um, through the drums, then you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. One is, the other is, the crash cymbal sounds the same because I'm e emphasizing or accenting the downbeat on one, two, three, and four. So my point is that if you wanted to play quarter notes here and give your right hand a well-deserved little break during this part of the song, just for two bars, then you could just play quarter notes. But I've written it as, and I'm pretty sure this is probably how Clem would play it. Where he, he, he's, Doing that motion, the same as he did with the hi-hat, to help you get through those fast eight notes, that molar whip action, but you've got the choice there. So two bars of, of, of eight notes on the crash cymbal, then we go back to the ride cymbal for three bars, and then my favorite drum fill in the song, at the end of chorus two, we play, we go into beat one, like we're, we're playing the drum beat on the ride cymbal, one, then we come down to the snare drum for, and two, two flams on the snare drum, and two, and three, and four, and one. So we get all one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one. So let's, tr let's create a little um, two bar loop. Really fun to play that. We then go into verse three, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Let me now play for you bridge one and chorus two so we can hear how those two sections work with each other. Here we go. So for verse three, you might have missed it. It's very, very subtle. Again, the bass drum's kind of hard to hear because the bass guitar is, is really thumping all the way through on, on, on all the eighth notes. But I think which is what Clem does. 
He doesn't play the bass drum on the and of one or the and of two. He just plays and then the bass drums come back in all the notes. So it's one of those things that, you know, if I was playing it live, I just play it the same every, every single bar. But on the recording, he does that for one bar after that drum fill. So I thought I'd include it on the chart, but don't worry too much about that or don't get stuck up on it. It's not really important for the song, it's just what Clem happens to do on that recording, on the recording. So verse three, six bars, bar four, open hi-hat on the, uh, bar six, sorry, open hi-hat on beat four. Again, as we had uh, at the beginning of verse one at the top of the page. Then chorus three, Again, it's a broken up chorus between the ride and crash symbol. First two bars on the ride, second two bars on the crash, but the fourth bar, we get this drum fill at the end of the crash section. One and two and three and four, three and up, just right, left, right, left, sixteenths. And when I'm coming off um, the, the crash symbol on uh, going into the drum fill for beat four, I, I, I don't play the and the three on the crash. I, I do let three just ring out on its own, giving my right hand time to come down to the snare drum. Next line, it stays up on the crash. We get the drum fill in bar two slightly differently. We, we proceed with a snare drum and crash symbol on the and of beat three. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. If you want to emphasize it with a different crash, great. But it's fast enough with your right hand moving around, but it's not impossible. So we get one and two and three and four together. Then it goes on three bars of just a crash symbol standard beat. Last line, um, we have um, uh, two bars of rise symbol. And then we get bar three, one and two and. A little surprise snare and cr uh, bass drum and crash on the and of two. One and two and. Then this cool little drum fill, three E and a four E and a one. The 16th notes all the way to beat one of the next bar. One and two and three and the four three and the one and two and three and four and. And we come back in with that intro drum fill. One and one and two and three and the four three and the one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Now let me play it up to speed for you. So all three lines of chorus three, here we go. So verse four, six bars are just hi-hat groove. Three and four and in bar six are open hi-hats again, as we talked about previously in a previous section. Bridge two, same as bridge one, six bars of that drum beat. Chorus four, we get three bars of just the right symbol groove, and then the fourth bar is crash symbol, and he moves to a slightly different idea now. Now, on the recording, he might be playing the bass drums on all, um, all eight eighth notes. What I mean is for that bar there, I've written it as one and two and three and four e and a, but you might be playing one and two and three and four e and a, the bass drum all the way through underneath that. So if you want to play that, fine, but I think he's more likely to be playing because it's the bass guitar that's sort of mi uh, mixing in my ears. One and three and three and four. I think that sounds better. It, it, um, it gives the bass drum a, a specific point to be played in between the snare drums, but either, either one works. So, when I move to the ride symbol for the next bar, I am then just playing one and two and three and four and, because we've moved to the second line, bars one and two, we've got the two bar pattern that repeats to the end of the song, where we get one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four together. And for this, I, I, I would probably most likely play quarter notes on the crash symbol. But you could, as I said, with the bass playing all the way through the second bar play, If you wanted to, but I'm pretty sure that he's playing it separately. One and two and three and four and. So that two bar pattern gets played again two times for the second line. 
Third line, exactly the same. So we're going all the way through to the third line. And then the fourth line, we get this outro, which is um, simply playing uh, every other beat. One and two and three and four. So right cymbal and crash, right cymbal and snare, sorry, on beat three. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. And we get this flam on beat three on the fourth bar. Yep, fourth bar. And the song ends with crash and bass. I think it slows down ever so slightly for the last time. Something like that. I, I can't remember exactly, but it's, it's very subtle. And that's how the song ends. So let me skip beat one, uh, line one of chorus four. And let me just play lines two, three, and four. Up to speed. Here we go. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. If you've got any questions, feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. Don't forget to download the free PDF from my website. Again, the link is beneath this video. And then while you're over there, if you haven't done so already, you might want to consider signing up to become an online member. And what I currently offer for £97 is a full year's online access to every single full video song lesson I've ever recorded and transcribed. And that's uh, over 600 famous and popular songs now, where just like this lesson, I teach you the song from start to finish. You get the fully transcribed PDF drum chart. And I've got at least four or five other Blondie songs up on the website already, perhaps even more. That's even coming up to seven now or something. So if you're a Clem Burke fan, you've got plenty of stuff to get your teeth stuck into on the website already. And so thank you for signing up and giving you access to hundreds more little videos, teaching you many, many famous drum beats, fills, and even drum solos. I give you three ebooks I've written over the years containing hundreds more famous beats, fills, and solos. And then over the year of your subscription, you also gain instant online access to all the new material that I upload for my members. And I record new lessons every week unless I'm ill on holiday. So you've got lots of cool stuff to look forward to over the year of your subscription. But if you've got any questions about any of that, then feel free to email me, robertdrumstheword.com. And until our next drum lesson together, toodle pip and happy drumming to you.